Claude's artifact feature is mind-blowing, but it got even better. You can now share your artifacts and remix others. So I found 15 examples and use cases that you can use right now. They're all in the description down below. Let's get started with number one. So this guy Jerome made this 3D game with physics that he made in a few prompts with Claude and he shared it. By the way, all the links are going to be in the description down below so you can check it out yourself. And here is our first reaction to it. Let's see. So if I click the arrows left and right, you can see that it actually works and it also runs super smooth. I wonder how fast I can make this little cube go. But this just shows that in a few prompts, you can make something like this that is just inherently entertaining. That's really cool. Let's jump to number two, digital art here by Max. As you can see, this was based on this code here that created something like this. And I think this just looks absolutely amazing. So he recreated this in Claude and here is how it looks. There you go. And this just opens my mind to what you can actually make inside of artifacts. Like if you can create something like this, it's more of a creative coding feature that you can make some animated art. And to me, this looks really beautiful. I love how the wave goes around, especially on the right and left side here. And now if you want to click on remix, you can actually see the code that is behind it. So it starts like this artifact, Hey Claude, let's explore some variations of this artifact. After you reproduce this artifact, can you suggest three ways we could remix it? And then it actually brings up the code and the preview and we literally get the exact same preview. And here you could easily change things around. It even suggests color variation, interactive rotation, shape modification, like we could experiment with different shapes. So. Go ahead and make some amazing digital art. Now for number three, we have a maze game. If you grew up like me playing the original maze game where there was a scary pop up, he actually created this maze game here that introduces inverted movement, enhancing the escape the maze dynamic. And we can click here to start playing. So I can just use my mouse pad here to scroll down and go up and down. And if we hit the side here, I'm actually, oh, there we go. Game over. Try again. It even has a grid size where you can increase the size of the grid. It also has a line thickness to make it harder or easier. But this gives you some inspiration of what you can actually do here. As you can see, this is a lot easier. <laughs> or I'm just bad. Let's jump to number four. This guy actually made a Rubik's cube inside of artifacts. Easily add AI into your own application in a completely new way. Step number one, log into ondemand.io. Now, let me show you how it works. You can easily add aviation plugins to track price, check aviation news, and then add that as a layer on top of GPT-4 that you can easily add to your app. Use case number two is that you have all these event plugins that you then use as a foundation to use in your AI app. So let's go to step number two, where I'm going to build an e-commerce type app. I'll go to the plugins marketplace where you have all these different plugins that you can use. I'm going to search for shopping, add internet shopping and Amazon shopping. Step number three, set up the playground. All I need to do is click on the plugins. We'll add the internet shopping and the Amazon shopping plugin. We'll name it shopping helper and save the preset. Now we can ask it, can you give me different headset options under $200 in the US? And just like that, we get a neat list of all these different headsets directly taken from Amazon, like the Jabra Evolve. Now, if you want to add this into your app, step number four, is just click on get code. We use the programming language Python, get code, and you just got the code that you can add into your own app. So check out On Demand by clicking the link in the description down below. Thanks to On Demand for sponsoring this section of the video. Let's jump to number four. This guy actually made a Rubik's cube inside of artifacts saying, oh my God, created a 3D Rubik's Cube simulation in 10 turns in Claude. There's a, still a long way to go, but this is happening. And now we can share the artifact created this way. So I'm gonna test it out. Um, I previously knew how to solve the Rubik's Cube, but now I have no idea. But basically you can, this is crazy. As you can see, it's a purely simulated Rubik's Cube that you can rotate 
left and right and I really even love the animation here. You can't really rotate the cube and stuff like that but we've seen a rotating cube from earlier so you can probably add that in but there you have it. He recreated a Rubik's Cube inside of here. So let's go to number five, SpaceX Star-Shaped Lander. As you can see, this guy Alex created a little game that looks, that looks like this. And I can go left and right and I can put the engine on. And basically I have to just fly left and right. And you can even see the altitude and speed. Oh, okay, I can't, I don't hit the, yeah, I do actually hit the me meteorites and land at the bottom and you literally get a final score fuel used. So again, a really cool way to make a game inside of here. So let's see if I can go really fast to the bottom. And there we go. Really dynamic, easy made game just inside of Claude that you can try out. All the links are in the description. There is no way that you can beat my final score of zero. Number six, we have a puzzle game from this guy, Twilight, where he says, now that I can share the artifacts I made with Claude, I'd like to share the sliding puzzle I made a while ago. You can choose your own illustrations and play the slide puzzle, assuming you are using a smartphone. So if you're interested, please do. I'm gonna click on it. So I don't actually use a smartphone right now. And I did see some other ones that were smartphone only, like this guy made a Minecraft clone in. And yeah, again, I can't really do the slides, but let's check if we can, yeah, we can literally do five by five as well and try to do the puzzle sliding game. We've done a lot of games now, so let's go to number seven, a VC funding simulator. So Ethan says in class, startup financing can be hard to explain. Now I just ask, create an interactive simulation that visually explains payoff differences for a startup and VC with liquidation preferences. And just like that, we can open it. And I find this very fascinating, especially if people start playing more and more with it, you can actually create some real value through these artifacts. So here you can see the investment amount in the top. So if you get paid $2 million, you have the liquid Asian preference multiple so let's say 1.5 VC ownership percentage so this is how much you give away I'm thinking about Shark Tank right now I'll give you two million dollars for 50 percent and here you have an explanation. This simulation shows how liquidation preferences affect the payout structure between VCs and founders at different exit values. So again if you reach exit value of 6 million you see that VC payout will be like this obviously it's 50 percent, so all of it goes very linear at the end here but yeah this goes to show that you can explain things like this that you learn in a textbook in a way different way now and i'll actually show you another very specialized tool a little bit later which is something that i definitely think you can use it on if you have a very special use case let's go to a next one that is again a color matching game and we've obviously done a lot of games and that's what a lot of people are using it for right now. I'll give you some different examples in a minute. This one by Sato Koyo. And she says something very interesting, which is this is not a competitor to create, which is another tool which can integrate with various APIs. But there may be situations where artifacts is deemed sufficient for casual content. And that's one of the big limitations with artifacts right now is that you obviously can't integrate with APIs. You can't install a bunch of packages as well that you may need to create the best tool that you can. But let's take a look at this. Here we go, simple game. Back and forth and I can rotate as well. It even has some sound effects. That's really cool. Let's just get one. Hey, there we go. On to the next one, number nine. Ninin says, I made fireworks art with Claude 3.5. Fill the summer with interactive fireworks art that lets anyone become a fireworks maker. Let's take a look. Here we go. The full screen. I can just click on it and boom. <laughs> That's actually really beautiful. I really like how these effects are. So you can just keep clicking and you might also hear the sound effects here as well. I think I'm going to spam 
And <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's actually really awesome. And that we have these tools allow us to make so much and let our creativity run wild. So it's really cool that somebody made this. And also it looks beautiful. So there you have it, fireworks. But what about number 10, a word cloud generator? You can enter a URL and it shows you the most frequent keywords. Here you go, it opens like this. Let's enter a URL. I'm gonna go to Anthropics Research. Copy this link, go back again, enter the URL and generate, failed to fetch. Maybe change it up, generate, failed to fetch. Seems like this doesn't work. Maybe we can just remix it and it will start reproducing the artifact. One thing that this has led me to think is that we will have the future that I envision, which is we can have on-demand apps. Basically, you can write whatever app you want and then you actually just create it like a Photoshop clone or even DaVinci Resolve that just instantly gets created in front of your eyes. We're kind of at the beginning level of this now. Let me see if I can do it again. Okay, so error fetching. I'm gonna copy and paste it back into Claude and see if we can fix it. It's gonna remix and adds error handling. And now we have actual URL or we have enter your text here. So you can see how we can just remix and improve upon what other people have made. Let's generate again, failed to fetch, but this is the loop that you will do again and again. Uh, actually, let's try with the text. Just copy paste everything and there we have it. You can even save as an image. Let's jump to number 11, Tetris. <laughs> this guy Kiwi Chan just said Cloud 3.5, I made Tetris using Sonnet Artifacts. All I said was, make Tetris. You can get it in the description down below. There you have it. That's Tetris for you. Let's run through these others quick because they're all games, but it does give you inspiration of what's actually possible. Number 12, this guy Moe's AI Tech made Flappy Chicken. <laughs> Has a nice little home screen as well. Oh, I need to actually click the button and you got a Flappy Bird clone. And I actually made this myself as well inside a Claude, but let's jump to number 13. Gimu AI made the Unblock Me game. And actually, I really like the design of this one where you have a really nice color layout with drop shadows if you're into UX, UI. And we can just keep going like this and we can't get out. <laughs> this is actually an impossible. It's impossible. So hey, Claude, we need to remix this one. And now I wanna show you my favorite ones that don't actually have a link in the description, but they are the best use cases for you if you wanna to try to build something custom. And that's one of them from Heather here that made an advanced cinematic video prompt generator. So if you use Runway ML's Gen 3, that is absolutely amazing, the best video generator we have, there are certain phrases and words that just generates a better output, right? So you can see here that she has a shot type, close, medium, wide, and then you have the camera movement, I think, the mood, the camera movement, the intensity, the settings, and just like that, you get a generated prompt that she just created this inside of Claude. That is an amazing accomplishment and a very creative solution because just writing all of this again and again and again is very tedious sometimes. And if you have a special use case like this as well, you can use this artifacts feature to create something uniquely yours. The same goes with how number 15 is a website builder. So Nick Dobos here has a very quick tutorial to two minutes on how to make a website. It's also in the description down below. And the real breakthrough here is that for me at least, I find that I can now just create anything and that my thoughts and my ideas is the limit for what I can do. And this is not only for Claude artifacts. With ChatGPT and writing code inside of Visual Studio Code that most high level developers are also coding in, there is really no excuse for me to create a tool myself, create a game myself, get through the loop of getting an error, integrating into an API and making something truly special. Even if it's a simple website like this, trying to do it yourself has unlocked a ton of different limits in my brain. And if you have an idea that you wanna go out and do, I highly encourage going out and doing it. So there you have 15 different artifacts that you can take inspiration from and create something unique. All right, don't forget to check out 
the links in the description down below. Also, click our next video here, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>